Hello, this is Francisco Kirbari and this is a short video on KDE Plasma. I ran GNOME for a long time and um, I switched to KDE Plasma a few months ago. As I explained in my previous videos, I'm extremely happy with KDE Plasma, but I'm gonna now try to play devil's advocate and list some reasons for not running KDE Plasma. And then you can let me know in the comments if you agree, if you disagree, and what you think of KDE Plasma. Uh, the first and foremost reason is that, let's face it, KDE Plasma has a reputation for being buggy. Yes, it does. And I strongly recommend you take a look at this video here. I'm going to leave the link in the, in the description. In the video description, it's called uh, Why is KDE so buggy? And it's an excellent video that explains why KDE is very is buggy or why some people view KDE as being buggy. So you should take a look at this video here. But let's face it, that's a reputation that KDE has. And I strongly recommend you take a look at the discussion, at the comments and some of them <coughs> uh, make excellent points. And, um, and that comes, and that uh, brings me to my second reason, which is not entirely independent from the first reason. The second reason for not running KDE is that it's way too complex. It's extremely complex. And if you look at the comments here, KDE has many, many parts that uh, interact with each other, and that's a potential source of problems. If you read through the comments, you are going to notice that some people mention KOS. KOS is a Linux distribution that's basically built around KDE. And uh, I never use KOS, but uh, I've read that's an excellent uh, distribution. And uh, if you are very serious about KDE, you should take a look at that. The downside is that um, the number of programs that are available for KOS is considerably smaller than the number of programs available, say, for Ubuntu or Arch Linux. And I know that um, the way that they want to develop the, the distribution, and I fully respect that, but that's something that um, people should be aware of. Uh, Another reason, reason number three for not running KDE Plasma is that um, some people sometimes feel that KDE Plasma is way too overwhelming. You can basically tweak and configure everything and that's, that intimidates some people. I don't feel intimidated by that, but some people do. I think that's great that you can configure m most things. For instance, let me show something that I really like. You can configure the look and feel of GTK applications so that you can have a uniform look and feel for Qt and G GTK application. I think that's great. And uh, you can basically configure everything. And some people feel that's a bit intimidated and it's a bit um, oh, too over overwhelming. I know that um, KDE Plasma comes with a set of defaults that's uh, reasonable for most most users, and that most users can use KDE Plasma without the need to tweak the desktop environment. But some people feel that uh, it's way too overwhelming. And um, reason number four for not uh, using KDE Plasma is that uh, GNOME has become the default, the de facto, desktop environment for many Linux distributions and um, for instance Fedora and Canonical is dropping Unity in favor of GNOME in the next uh, uh, Ubuntu release and so on so probably GNOME will get more investment more 
money and manpower and so on invested than KDE Plasma and uh, and maybe some distributions are hesitant to adopt KDE Plasma as their default desktop environment because KDE Plasma is extremely configurable, complex and can be somewhat intimidating to novice users. But uh, on a side note, on a personal note, let me mention something. If you install the package color D-KDE, you get this entry here under system settings that let you handle ICC profiles. If you have several displays and if you color calibrate your displays and if you have several ICC profiles for those displays, you can uh, handle those ICC profiles here and that's great and that's why I have it installed but if you actually want to calibrate your monitor your display you still need to rely on some GNOME code on some GNOME tools and I hope that uh, in the future Color D KDE will be further developed and uh, it's extremely important for photographers, designers, and so on. Let me show you something. I recently came across uh, this blog entry here from October 2016 when Color DKDE version 0 0.5.0 was released and it's basically said that uh, Color DKDE, the development of Color DKDE was basically very slow or non-existent for several years and then it was brought back to life fortunately and uh, it ends with a very promising statement for the next release users will be able to calibrate uh, displays monitors without the need for GNOME tools and I sincerely hope that's the case and that color DKD is further developed. That's an important tool for many users. And um, as a final remark, which is not related with reasons for not running KDE, I started using Linux in late 1996 when I do booted the uh, Windows in NT, I believe, with Red Hat Linux and um, I've been following the development uh, of Linux since 1996 and Linux has become extremely successful on servers and other areas but it has not become as successful as it could have become on the desktop and one of the reasons uh, commonly cited for that is fragmentation we have a huge number of Linux distributions and we have a fairly number of desktop environments. If we had um, over the years only a few desktop environments that were extremely polished, user-friendly and, um, and nearly bug-free or as bug-free as possible, probably uh, Linux would have become more uh, successful on the desktop environment, on the desktop. And um, I, I hope that GNOME and KDE Plasma and other desktop environments will get polished over in the next few years, will become user-friendly and um, will become an excellent alternative. I would not say Windows, I could never go back to Windows but uh, OS X Apple at least so let me also know what you think about fragmentation and and the reasons why Linux has not become as successful as we hoped on the desktop